Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Matt Hester. I'm a senior partner technology strategist on the TS2 team from Microsoft. And in this Azure in 5 minute video series, I'm going to show you how to upload a Windows Server 2012 standard image up to Microsoft Azure. Now, the great thing about this is even though Azure has data centers the default images, you have the ability, if you have standard servers, to upload them and provision them, especially from a licensing flexibility standpoint. This makes it very easy. Now, the process I'm going to show you today is going to take a bit longer in real life than five minutes. I'm going to pause a couple times here and there, but it also would work no matter what kind of image. As long as that image that you're uploading is supported by Azure, you have the ability to upload this. So the process I'm going to show you can generally be used for whatever system you have. Now this story starts with actually a Windows Server 2012 edition server. So here I have just a virtual server. It's running on my local system. Now the first thing you're going to do after you build the server and get it all ready and ready, uh, ready to run is you want to generalize it. Now we do this using a tool called sysprep. So I'm going to go ahead and run that right now. I'm just going to go ahead and go to my command prompt. I'm going to go into an administrative level command prompt. It defaults me to the Windows System 32 directory. I need to change one more directory and it's simply just sysprep. It's going to take me into that and I'm just going to run sysprep. Now what this does is it gives me the ability to set up how I want to generalize the system. Do I want to have an out of the box experience? Essentially that's what you see when you first install a system. Uh, I'm going to generalize it, which is going to make it unique. It's going to take away the identity, IP addresses, things like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and shut it down because I want that VHD file that here to be something that's not being currently used and I want to actually be able to upload it quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK to that and it's going to start the process. Now this process will take a couple of minutes and depending on what's on that server uh, it may may be just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording here um, so we can actually go ahead and uh, finish that and then when it's done I'll bring it back. Now that sysprep is finished running you notice that it did shut down as we asked it to and I now have my VHD and my v, uh, virtual machine is currently turned off and I'm ready to begin the upload process. However, before we can actually upload this file, we have to create a storage account and a container inside that storage account to actually store this file. So let me go ahead and switch over to my Azure portal. Here I am in my Azure portal and notice that I'm looking at all the items. Now the first thing we want to do is create a storage account. Now I've already created a storage account here, but to do, to do so it's actually quite simple. I'm just going to go ahead and click on New. I'm going to select, uh, select data services and then I'm going to select storage and click on quick create and then you give it a name. Uh, you tell it what location you want to actually store uh, the storage inside of it. Uh, what subscription if you have multiple where you want to place it and then what redundancy level do you have. Uh, where do you want copies of this essential VHD file to be stored. I recommend geo redundant if you can do it. It does ask, add a little bit to the cost uh, but not too much when you look at storage in the cloud that's here. Now I've already done this so I'm going to go ahead and drill in the storage account that I've created earlier which is mhester vhds and you'll also want to create a container now these containers are simply folders that are there for you and I've actually created a folder inside of here called VHDs now the reason I show you this is that you want to make note of this URL that's here this URL is going to be essentially needed in the commands that I'm going to use when I upload my VHD file from my system online or on on-prem to the actual Azure environment now to do that you'll need this URL now how do we actually upload this file Folks, there's actually a couple of ways to do this. There's uh, some GUI tools that are out there. Um, there's AZ Copy, which is a fairly old school tool for Azure. And then there's PowerShell. And I'm going to use PowerShell today. It's one of my preferred ways to work with uh, Azure. And I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my PowerShell, PowerShell session now. And you'll notice that in my PowerShell session, I have one comment that's currently remarked, which is add Azure account. Now, this is how I authenticate this PowerShell session to my particular Azure tenant where I want to upload this VHD. So you want to make sure you can do this. Add Azure account by using Azure Active Directory is one way to do it. Um, you can also download a published settings file and import that into a session. It's just a matter of how do you want to authenticate to Azure and tell it it's you and it's your subscription you want to go to. The other command that you see here is the where the magic happens of how I actually upload this and add Azure VHD is the command that I'm going to use. Notice I have my destination here and it's that URL that I showed you earlier. Now I also have to tell it where the VHD file is that I want to use and upload and tell it the name that it's going to be side inside of Azure for me to use and leverage. 
I also have to have the local file path of where that VHD is on my system where it happens to be located. And if you happen to have really good uh, bandwidth, you can actually increase by the number of upload speeds by increasing the number of upload threads up to 32 to really increase the kind of uploading capacity of this environment. Now, with that said, once you start uploading this, it's going to take some time, folks. And even though this video is only a couple of minutes long, I'm actually going to pause it once I start this commandlet so you can actually see and see that process all the way through. And I'll show you what it looks like on the back end. So I'm going to go ahead and just highlight that command. And I'm going to go ahead and run it. And then I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. Now, after the file is uploaded, it sticks it in that container where we have. So if I open up this container, you'll see my VHD files that are here. Um, I have one that I created earlier, which is this top one. And I have this one uh, down here that I just created. Now, the great thing about this is once it's there, then it's just a matter of telling Azure that I want this to be an image that I can choose from my gallery. That's actually done very easily as well. If I switch into my virtual machines directory inside of Azure, my environment, and I click on images, you'll see that I've already created one before, but let me show you the process that's here. I simply say create, um, I give it a name, we'll just say Windows 2012 uh, standard. You can give it a description if you desire, um, give it a URL location. Now notice it just lets me drill into those VHD files and I can simply pick the one um, that I chose earlier. And notice here it comes in and it's asking you have I run sysprep and notice even though it's Windows it could also be Linux. You have to check this box. If you do not notice it is required. So you do have to sysprep before you can actually load this. Simply check this box and click on the check to continue the process and it's going to create an image for you. Now what does that look like and how do you get to it? So a big part of the process has already been done. We sysprepped the image. Uh, we created a storage account. We uploaded that VHD into that storage account. Now it's just a matter of using it and leveraging it after we turn it into an image. To do that, simply go new. Um, you want to go into compute and virtual machines. And I'm going to choose from gallery. And notice here when I choose from gallery, it's going to come up with all the images that are available to me. But you have this section called my images. And you'll notice if I drill in here, I have my image that I just created. And now I can actually start provisioning Windows Server 2012 standard editions inside of my Azure tenant.